the lecture, is there any um, questions or anything you want to share related to the to the course? Yeah, everyone. Okay. <coughs> Can you see the, <clears throat> the slide? Uh, yes, yes, doctor. Okay. Okay, Brother Kutaiba, you, you're there, eh? Brother Kutaiba? Yes, yes, doctor. I know why, why you haven't submitted your assignment yet. Yeah, I submitted. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's not shown in in the system, but when you open it, it uh, you can see it. See, yeah. Uh? Yes. So here is 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 shown as view, but it's not shown as third in. But when I press it, you, your assignment is then. Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's okay then. Okay, uh, so just want to remind you that your assignments should be submitted in Microsoft Word, yeah? So if you submitted in uh, a PDF, please resubmit uh, in Microsoft Word. And then um, another part, uh, I think this one, the second part, the, the term paper. Um, so I think, um, yeah, only three three people have submitted so far. But what I I I think what I I will, I want to do, but I have to get the the consent of um, everyone, is that I want to extend this um, term paper, so you can submit until uh, next week, so maybe until um, Monday Tuesday. Yeah, and Tuesday next week. So I'll just extend this uh, the due date, okay? Because I think you also um, because to be fair, we are just learning about monetary policy today, and I think you can integrate monetary policy as well in in your in your analysis for the for this for this third paper, okay? So you will have until so now is the first. So until seventh. Okay, so I'll just I'll, I'll just change the the assignments. Okay, so the due date for this one is until the seventh. Okay, it's until the seventh of June. Okay, so then you have plenty of time to uh, improve. Okay, if you have already submitted, you can also have sub. You have to you can go 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 through the assignment again. Okay. But if you don't want, it's okay. It's fine. Okay. If you're already satisfied with your 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 paper, then it's okay. But so now you don't have to worry about about resubmitting. Okay. So this one, uh, basically by by seventh of June, uh, midnight. Okay. So you have you have a uh, few uh, extra more days to to submit for the term paper, especially. Okay. And you can integrate what we are learning today, which is the monetary policy. Okay. So last week last week we learned about fiscal policy. So this week we will learn about monetary policy. 
Okay, so let me just update this. Okay, unless there is anyone that disagrees with this decision, you can you can voice out. Okay, so if you are okay, then I, I've already confirmed it. Yeah. Okay, so there are a few that still haven't. Right, let me see. Individual assignment. Yeah. Uh, Mahmoud, Suleiman. Yes. So you have. Ah. Uh, I have submitted since. You've submitted, but it's in PDF. So please resubmit in. Uh, in Word, yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, please resubmit in Word. The main reason, okay, the main reason why because is basically I will review the paper directly through. Microsoft Teams. Okay, so if through uh, if you submit PDF, I cannot comment. So I, I can okay. just highlight like this, right? Okay. So I'll if uh, yeah, so I, if I let me show you if I sh if if you submit Microsoft Word, okay, so the word can come up, and then I can put review here. Okay, and then I can I can highlight I can uh, it's like so like it's, it's normal uh like the normal Microsoft Word, and if I if if I return to you, you can see what what are the the things that I commented on? So maybe hopefully from the from the feedback, you can also improve for the future as well. Okay, and then you can see uh, what your marks are and how you how 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 I evaluate uh, your your assignment. And if you want to discuss later on, then you can have that opportunity as well. Okay, so this is this is why I, I require you to submit in Microsoft Word. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so for the other assignment also, please submit in uh, Microsoft Word. Okay, so uh, is there any questions before I, I move to the to the lecture today? Okay. Oh, and then there's another thing. Actually, part of the part of the part of the evaluation okay, is that you also have quizzes actually. So I. I don't think I've given any quizzes yet. Okay, so what I'll do okay, is that I'll give you the quiz. Let's just see the course outline again. Okay, so I'll give you the quiz, which is a quizzes quiz. Okay, so it's a website called quizzes, and you uh, can basically answer at your own time, but there will be a, a, a time, uh, time frame. Yeah, so there's a quiz here, 10%. So this this quiz okay, is is a uh, once you start the quiz okay, I think there's, there will be around 20 to 30 questions per quiz. So once you start the quiz, the time limit for for you to answer each question, I think is around one to two minutes. Okay, so you have to answer uh, immediately and then they will immediately also give you the, 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 the your marks. Okay. So if you if you're familiar with quizzes, so that's that's uh, exactly the the website that I'll give it to you. Okay, and basically, I think there will be two quizzes. Okay, so I'll, I'll inshallah by tomorrow I'll give you uh, the macroeconomic quiz. Okay, and then after that a microeconomic quiz. So both of these quizzes you can answer during uh, at your own time. But once you start, you have to complete immediately so it's like a normal quiz okay and you can try to basically try to if you want you can try to google the answers or you want to try the to um look on the textbook uh, if you feel that you have time okay you can you can do that but usually uh it's a it's a time uh, there's a time limit to answer each question so it's good if you can also study uh, beforehand, okay, so it's like a normal quiz. So usually, if if uh, if it's physical classes, I will do it in class. Okay, so I'll just give you the the questions and you do do it in class. And but by the end, uh, I'll 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 uh, see your uh, I'll mark your answers. Right. So but this one is, is of course online. Okay, so this is basically 10 10 percent of your of your final mark. So please uh, be aware of that as well. Okay, um, but you have the flexibility and you can answer it anytime. Okay, anytime um, that you are free and you can attempt to answer it. Okay. When is it going to come, the quiz? 
the quiz I'll I'll give it by inshallah by 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 the end of tomorrow I'll give you the first quiz or I'll give you both quizzes tomorrow and you can answer you can answer both um I'll maybe I'll give you two weeks you can answer during your own time but once you start there's a time limit you understand okay I got it okay once you so, start that um, yeah so once you start there's 30 minutes to answer everything for example yeah so and then if you exit you can I think you can enter back but I, if you enter back after 30 minutes, then it's, all, it's already finished. You cannot submit your answers anymore. Okay, so once you start, you, should, you have to answer. Okay. Yeah, so that is basically... But the questions are about uh, macroeconomics or micro? Both. Macro and micro. What we have learned, right? Yeah. yeah so it will cover up until uh, today, inshallah. Okay, so it's good. I think it's uh, it's also would be would help you for your final assessment. Okay. Uh, okay. So any any other questions? Okay. So your term paper has been extended, yeah. So until um, the six yeah, or six or seven, yeah, seven um, of uh, June. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's no question. We can start with the lecture. Okay, Rabbi Shrahli, Sadri, Wasili, Amri, Wahlu, Nukhlatab, Nilisani, Khul, Kauli. So for today, uh, the topic that, that we'll go through is on interest rate and monetary policy. Okay. Usually the, the arrangement is um, actually we will learn about money creation first, um, but because I think um, uh, you you can integrate monetary policy in your in your assignment, I think we will cover monetary policy first, and then next week we will look further into money creation. Okay, so the origins of money, how money is created, but it is it is very much very much um, um, intertwined and integrated in monetary policy as well. But for 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 the details on money creation, how money is created, we will we will look into that uh, in the next week. So for for this week, we will focus just on interest rate and monetary policy. Okay, so this is a continuation of the topic that we learned last week on fiscal policy. Right. So if you remember, last uh, uh, fiscal policy is related to the government's expenses. Okay, the government's expenses and and how they manage. Um, uh, how they are involved in uh, the economy directly. So this is related to the tax collection that they get and the revenue that they get and also the spending that they do. Okay, so it's government spending and also how much they collect. Right? And because uh, of the difference between how much they collect from the revenue and tax and the amount that they they spend, the the budget of the government may have may be a, a deficit Okay, so the deficit is where they spend more than they collect and the the surplus happens when they spend less than they collect okay so this is uh, the fiscal policy um, and the fiscal policy can be uh, in terms of the mechanism that the government can undertake is they can they can either spend in um, uh, government spending in projects or spending that, by giving people money directly okay so this is a, a continuation to that, but it is looking at another insti institution. Okay, so we have the government institution and their involvement in the in the economy. And secondly, now the focus uh, for for monetary policy is the institution of uh, the the central bank. Okay, and this uh, for today we will look at how the central bank uh, con uh, um, implements monetary policy, yeah, and this is usually. Um, and this is attributed or the main factor that they 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 uh, change okay or the main tool that they can they can uh, use to influence is through the interest rate and we will look at the relationship between interest rate and monetary policy okay so so the topics the subtopics that we will look at is basically we will look at um why people why people uh, demand for money. Okay, why people demand for money? Okay, so 
when it comes to the demand for money, primarily the demand for money comes from transaction and asset demand. Okay, so this is the topic, first topic. And then we will look at um, how bank balance sheet influences money supply. Okay, and this is actually part of money creation. Okay, we will we will learn we will go into the, the details of money creation next week inshallah. Um, but usually usually uh, the, the the arrangement is usually we learn about money creation first. But I think uh, for, for just for this semester I'll I'll change the arrangement. Um, but we will sort of touch on money mo uh, money creation. Okay, here. And then we will look at um, one of the primary tools that the central bank uses in order to implement monetary policy, which is through uh, open market operations. Okay, and then number four, we will see the different types of monetary policy, which is expansionary and restrictive monetary policy. Okay, so there is a time where the central bank will use expansionary monetary policy, and there is a time that they also they they may, they will use restrictive monetary policy instead. Okay, um, and then there's also other issues that. Uh, we will discuss inshallah i think related to um the 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 financial crisis okay um yeah so one of the main um components that is related to monetary policy is basically interest rate okay and this is uh, i think very much integrated in our financial system okay and this is uh, the system that even the Islamic banks are currently operating in. Okay, um, that's why we see we 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 always argue that we want to move away from the interest rate, and this is hopefully can be done through uh, creation uh, and the the strengthening of the Islamic finance industry. Okay, but as of now, it is still an at it uh, relatively small, uh, and it is still operating within the interest rate system. Okay, so. The, the 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 way that they can operate right now is is by making the transactions shari'a compliant okay so this is part of the challenge of the islamic finance and hopefully we, we will see further development and it can move away completely from this uh, all encompassing interest rate system okay so uh, what is interest rate okay interest rate is is when we look at it fundamentally it is basically the price the price that we pay for the use of money. And this is basically the, 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 the definition of riba. Okay, this is the definition of riba. Okay. Um, whereby uh, when we use that money, okay, when we use over a certain period, we have to pay more. Okay, and if we, we use longer and we pay back uh, with a longer time, and then of course we have to pay more. Okay. Um, and basically, uh, in the economy, in the global, in the macro economy, in any country, for example, we, if you look at Malaysia, there is a lot of different interest rates. Okay, we will see the interest rate uh, in Maybank, CIMB, HSBC, right? Even um, uh, um, uh, M Bank, right? So there are different interest rates from for, from different banks. Okay, and even in in Maybank for its uh, in itself. There are different interest rate for different instruments. Okay, so it may be confusing if we just, you know, we just um, we we have to mention all of it, right? So when we when it comes to uh, the interest rate that we refer to okay, in in this topic, in our discussion of this topic, it is basically we will just imply that there is only one interest rate. Okay, we just imply it. Okay, but and, and everyone's interest rate is based. Uh, or the bank's interest rate or the financial inst financial institution's inst interest rate is based on this one interest rate. Right? So this is the primary interest rate or you can maybe argue it is the aggregate interest rate. Okay, So um, if we look at uh, the, the, the interest rate, okay, you can argue that the interest rate is determined, okay, determined by money supply and money demand okay but okay there is also you can uh, you can you can if you look at its relationship uh, you can argue that it is a chicken and egg situation 
Okay, here the 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 the, the um, point is saying that interest rate is determined by money supply and demand, but it can also go the other way around, where money supply and demand, you know, uh, where interest rate will influence money supply and demand. Okay, um, and this is related uh, uh, to the monetary policy. Okay, so so it can also be whereby. Um, money supply and money demand is determined by interest rate. Okay, high. Okay, so it is both. Um, it is you know uh, multi-directional. Okay, it goes both ways. Okay, and when it comes to money supply and money demand, okay. But first, uh, we, we, we will look at firstly demand. OK, so when we look at demand. Um, you, you, you we, we've we've covered the, the microeconomic demand and we also covered the macroeconomic demand, right, which is aggregate demand, right? So now we will learn about. Money demand, okay, so this is specific to money, OK, so we we've we've seen the microeconomic demands. OK, what are the factors of the demand? Okay, and also aggregate demand. There are factors that um, that that influence the aggregate demand, right? So similarly for money, there are uh, two main factors. Okay, basically that influences the demand for money. Okay, so this goes back to the question of why do people hold money? Okay, and basically the answer is number one, there is a transactions demand. And number two, it, there is an asset demand for money. Okay, so the 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 the, the transactions. <clears throat> so basically, we, we can we can argue that people hold money for different reasons. Okay, and one of that reason is that because money is the most convenient to have in order for us to undertake transactions. Okay, so if we uh, for example, we have another type of financial asset, okay, which is also valuable. Okay, for example, we have bonds, and the value of the bond is one million. Okay, so it is also valuable, but in terms of making transactions with that with that financial financial instrument, it is not as easy as if we ha are holding money. Okay, so why do we hold money? One of the main reasons is because we we want uh, we want to undertake transactions. And it is the easiest financial as, uh, asset, financial instrument, the most convenient financial instrument for us to undertake transactions. Okay, and this, or, or you can argue, uh, transactions or purchase. Okay, we want to purchase things, we want to buy things, right? And these are uh, uh, basically why people hold hold money. Okay, and and this factor, okay, this reason in terms of uh, transaction demand on 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 uh, or purchasing things using money is basically independent of interest rate. Okay, interest rate does not influence um, uh, the transaction demand. Okay, so no matter the interest rate, people will still hold money because that's the most convenient. Okay, so holding money is like is is uh, like putting money in your in your wallet, right? So it's not um, uh, like you're putting money in a in a long term. Uh, savings account where you cannot access the money. Okay, so it is where you hold the money where you can easily get it. Okay, so that's uh, uh, reason number one, the first factor. Okay, on why people hold money. Okay, and the second reason is because money uh, can also be used. Uh, sorry, why people hold money is because it is also a asset demand. Okay, and this is where the interest comes in. Okay, because um, um, in this aspect, money is considered as a, a financial asset, okay, and a financial asset that um, can provide some sort some sort of return, okay, and it is in, in this aspect, it is also a store of value. Okay, whereby if you put money in the bank, you can get some interest, for example. 
Okay. Or if you take out your money from the bank, you will forgo your right to uh, to obtain interest. Okay. So this is where the 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 feature of money as an asset comes into play. Okay. And the the returns. Okay. The returns at, uh, uh, of of um, money as an asset comes basically that uh, basically from interest rate. Right, so if you put money in the bank, you leave it there, you will get some interest from it, right? Um, and basically, this behavior, this behavior or this um, um, uh, reasoning, okay, um, is influenced will be influenced by interest rate, okay? So basically, the relationship between the demand for money and interest rate is that it is inverse okay so it goes the other the other way whereby the higher the interest rate okay, the higher the interest rate in high the lower the demand for money in terms of the asset demand okay and the the lower the interest rate the higher the demand for money okay why is this because when when the interest is higher okay when interest is higher people will demand less of their money why because if they just leave the the money in the bank they will get higher interest okay so the demand for money is less so you do not want to take out your money now okay um and Another aspect is that when interest is high, people don't go to the bank to borrow. Why? Because we have to. Pay, if you borrow during that time, you have to pay a high interest. So the demand for money is also low in that aspect. Okay. So similarly, in uh, uh, on the other hand, okay, where when interest is low, okay, people would rather take out their money and maybe invest in somewhere else. Okay, interest is low. Maybe let's say when interest is two percent. Okay, and you have 200 million, uh, 100 million in the bank. So if you leave leave your money in the bank, you can only get interest of 2 million. Okay, so but if you take out your money, 100 million, and you buy bonds, for example, and the bond is offering 5%, so you will, you will of course, take out your money, and you can buy the bond, and you can have a higher return from that. Okay, uh, or on the other uh, hand, is also when the interest are low, people would go to the bank and borrow so the demand for money is also increasing in that aspect okay so when you add both the transaction demand and the asset demand you will then get the total total money demand okay so this is this is where the demand for money comes from in the economy in the macro economy especially okay and when we uh, visualize this in the form of a graph okay Basically, the transaction demand for money okay, is a horizontal, you know, a vertical line up. Okay, so in this uh, graph, okay, on the left here is the rate of interest. Okay, rate of interest, and down here the x uh, axis is the amount of money demanded. Okay, so for the transaction demand for money, okay, as as I mentioned previously. The interest rate does not influence uh, uh, the demand. Okay, so no matter what the interest rate is, the amount of demand in a related to transaction demand of money is the same. Okay, so no matter from ten until zero, this demand doesn't change. So that's why it's a vertical line. Okay, um, and then if we look at the asset demand for money, it this is where it is. The shape is similar to. The, the the demand the microeconomic demand that we have see, uh, learned about and also the aggregate demand so in this case this is a downward sloping curve okay it goes down so if you look here the shape goes uh, what it shows is that the higher the interest rate okay, the higher the interest rate the lower the demand for money right for example here here if the interest rate is low the demand is high Okay. And then if if we go 
higher interest rate okay the demand changes further and if you go higher the demand becomes less and less okay so basically both the as transaction and asset demand for money when we add them together it will be the total demand for money okay so the total demand for money is basically just shifting uh, um, if you if you can see here it is basically the transaction demand is two two uh, two blocks okay from the from the left okay okay so it moves to the right so add that to the asset demand basically it is also two here okay and basically once the demand demand for money intersects with the supply for money okay um and and uh, we will we will, i think we will look into the details of money creation and its relationship to uh, money supply okay next week but we'll i think some some in some aspects we will also touch today um but basically the the equilibrium the equilibrium rate here in terms of where the demand uh, meets the supply this is where the interest rate in the economy is okay so in this case this is five percent okay so the argument is that the interest rate will be influenced by supply and demand okay so if the demand for example um, increases okay if the demand increases let's say now it moves here okay d m2 right and when this happens now you have a new equilibrium okay so this basically increases the equilibrium rate okay at the, at the interest rate okay um but the, the the other way around may also happen whereby and we will see this later when the central bank sets a new interest rate that is different from the current interest rate this will also influence money supply and money demand okay for example now let's say in in this case uh, uh, now it is five percent but now for whatever reason the central bank says we want to decrease the interest rate to three percent okay so now the new equilibrium is here okay so either the supply moves or the demand moves or both moves at the same time okay and it will reach until a point where it is three percent right so the demand must go down or the supply must go up okay so it can happen if for example supply goes up okay, so su su supply goes up here you will reach the three percent okay or or demand goes down okay also be three percent okay so uh, it can also happen if both move at the same time okay so either way the interest may also influence the movement of the money supply and money demand okay yeah so yeah as i mentioned the 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 money supply uh, where it intersects with the money demand this will uh, uh, um, change or this will determine the equilibrium interest rate in the in the economy okay and this will uh, basically the shifts in money supply and money, money demand will also change the equilibrium interest rate okay um and there is also okay a very uh, in, uh, uh, uh you, you can say is a fundamental relationship okay between interest rate and bond prices okay and i think you can you can realize this right now if you analyze the bond prices and interest rate okay so basically now what's happening is that interest rates are uh are, are increasing okay around the world um central banks are increasing the interest rate and you can see when interest rate increase bond prices go down okay or when interest rates go down bond prices will go up okay so there is usually the trend is that there is an inverse relationship okay inverse relationship where interest rate okay uh, uh, moves on the opposite at the opposite direction in the opposite direction to bond prices okay so if interest rate go up bond prices go down interest rate go down bond prices will go up and the reason being is that 
um, it is um, um, what do you call substitute to one another. Interest rate and bond prices are substitute to one another. Okay, uh, basically, if you look from the perspective of an investor, right? If you, if if let's say you have one hundred million, okay, and you have one hundred million in the bank, okay. Let's say you have one hundred million, and um, you leave it in the bank, and so far the bank is the interest rate that is being given is five percent, and basically you get five million return uh, every uh, with this interest rate. Um, but let's say during this time, uh, bond prices. A bonds give a, I don't know, yeah, okay. So bonds give a return of, let's say, 4%. Okay, so of course, if you have 100 million, you will leave, you will leave your money in the bank. Okay, so in this case, bond, bonds give 4%, and then interest rate give 5%. Okay, so uh, it's better to put your money in the bank. So you can get uh, a higher interest rate as compared to if you buy a bond. Okay. So now, okay, if for example, for whatever reason, uh, the central bank decides, okay, now the interest rate is going down. We want to change. Okay, so now we change the interest rate to three percent. Okay, so here the interest rate go down. Okay, so what happens now is that you you can see, okay, bonds are paying a fix of four percent. Interest rate is going down three percent, so I would rather uh, take my money out of the bank, which uh, uh, which I can only get three percent, and buy bonds. Okay, and if I buy bonds, I will get four percent. Okay, so this is better. Okay, but the issue is that usually when this happens, the bond price will go up because the demand for bonds are increasing as well. Okay, because you want a higher return, but now everyone is, is taking their money out of the bank and they want to buy the bonds. Okay, so that will increase the bond price. Okay. Um, and similarly, similarly, if for example, uh, interest rate suddenly go up and uh, uh, now, for example, everyone has bonds and then now the central bank says, okay, instead of 3%, we want to increase seven percent okay so so the bond holders now they want to sell okay i want i have a, a bond that is valued at 100 million okay uh, so i want to sell in the market because i want to put money in the bank i can get seven percent okay so when this happens everyone is trying to sell this will lower the the bond price okay this is lower the bond price as well and this is basically the relationship is also uh, um, uh, um, goes the other way around as well. Okay, the lower bond price will also increase the interest rate. So it is a uh, a loop as well. Okay, so it, it feeds uh, one another. Okay, so this is the relationship between uh, uh, demand, supply. Okay, money money demand, money supply, and interest rate. Okay, where whereby the the equilibrium of the interest rate, um, uh, the equilibrium of uh, money supply and money demand will determine the interest rate, and then it would also influence the bond prices in the in the market. Okay. Uh, yeah. Are you following me so far in terms of this relationship? Any any questions? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, doctor. Okay. So <clears throat> now uh, we we sort of understand the relationship, right, uh, of interest rate, money supply, money demand. Okay. So now we we will look into the role of central bank, where the central bank comes into this. Okay. And to understand the role of the central bank, we have to understand or we have we have to get to know a bit about how the central bank operates. Okay. So the central bank 
like any other bank, they have balance sheet. Okay, or any organization, any company, any institution, they have a balance sheet. Okay, so the balance sheet is where you have the organization or institution has assets and has liabilities. Okay, and what happens is that at the end of the day, the assets and the liabilities must balance. Okay, they must balance. That's why it's called a balance sheet. Okay, so for a, for a, a central bank, um, uh, the balance sheet also helps uh, the central bank determine the conduct of monetary policy. Okay, and they will, uh, as we will see later, uh, this is where the transactions of monetary policy will occur. Okay, and uh, like the commercial banks, okay, like commercial banks as well, the assets of central banks basically consist of securities and loans. Okay, so securities are basically the, the financial instruments, okay, the financial instruments. Okay, so this is where uh, the bonds, okay, uh, the suku. Okay, so this is where the central bank holds these financial assets or financial instruments, um, and it is considered an asset. Okay. Secondly, is the loans that the central bank gives to commercial banks. Okay. So commercial banks like CIMB, Maybank, um, um, even the, the, the Islamic banks, okay, so financing, can take up loans or financing from the central bank. Okay. So basically, it's like it's like if you if you are uh, go to the to May Bank and take up a loan, and basically, the loan that you take is considered an asset to the bank. Okay, May Bank will consider that the loan that you take is an asset. So if you take a loan of one million, I borrow one million from May Bank, that one million is considered an asset, right? So in this case, for the central bank. The central bank will give a loan to Maybank, for example. Maybank will borrow from the central bank 100 million, and that 100 million is considered an asset to the central bank. Okay, so that's one side of the balance sheet. On the other side is the liabilities. Okay, and I think you will learn this in more details in accounting uh, subject. Okay, so the, on the other side, okay, is the liabilities. This is where uh, the reserves of commercial banks are held. So reserves are the accounts of commercial banks. Right? So all the commercial banks in the country, right? for example, in Malaysia, Maybank, HSBC, CIMB, they have an account with the central bank of Malaysia, Bank Negara Malaysia. Um, basically, Maybank has an account with them. All, all the commercial banks have an account with them. Right? So this account is similar to like our account. Right? I think everyone, uh, you are students, everyone has Muamalat account. Right? So each and every one of us has a Muamalat account. And when we put money in that account, this is actually considered a liability to the bank. Why? Because the bank has to take care of our money. And whenever we want to take out the money, the bank has to give it. And, and in Malaysia, we have a guarantee up to 200,000 per account. Okay? So the bank has to. Uh, up to 200,000, they have to give immediately, okay, uh, in terms of um, um, the deposit that we put. Okay, so this is a liability to the bank, okay. But in terms of the central bank, the liability are the reserves of commercial banks. Okay, so this is where the account of commercial banks are being put, okay. Secondly, is the the treasury deposits. Okay, so this is this is basically government's money. Okay, so the government, you know, they take, they collect the tax, they collect the revenue from the, you know, the businesses that they have from the GLC, for example, or when they, when they have a budget surplus or from whatever uh, uh, source that they have, they will need a bank account, okay, and their bank account is being held by the central bank. Right, so this is the government's money, the treasury deposit. Okay. And then thirdly, another liability is in terms of the 
Federal Reserve notes that are outstanding. Okay, so this is basically the uh, the financial instruments that the central bank has issued. Okay, so this is the 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 um yeah so yeah so this is the 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 financial instrument that the central bank has issued and basically when you when the central bank issues a, a bond for example okay bond by bank negara malaysia basically they have to repay the bondholder a certain percentage and then by the end of the tenure of the uh, bond they also have to pay the full amount right so this is sort of a liability to the central bank okay so basically when you add uh, when you look at the figures of assets and liabilities of the central bank you have to balance between the two so the both the left and the right side must be balanced right so this is one example doctor yeah. what is the difference between what we talked about uh, the securities and the federal reserve no south and securities oh yeah it's the same thing Federal Reserve notes. Okay, this is this is also another term. Okay, but this is this is actually a American 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 term because the 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 Central Bank of America is uh is called the Federal Reserve, right? So you can you can you can exchange this with Central Bank notes. Okay, so this is also a terminology. For financial instruments. Okay, so in this case, the financial instrument is the financial instrument that is issued by the central bank. So this is also like bonds or uh, repo, reverse repo. So these are there's different financial instruments that the central bank can uh, issue. Like for Malaysia, we have the uh, suku as well, and this is. Uh, basically, the amount that is outstanding that the that the central bank has issued. Okay, uh, so there's different terminologies, and I think it's good for you to be aware of this. Okay, uh, financial instruments, notes, uh, bonds, suku. So these are all interchangeable in terms of the wording. So, okay. so doctor, on the asset, the securities uh, are when the the central bank buys the the bonds. Yeah. And for the liabilities, when the central bank issue the bonds. Yes. Correct. Okay, so this is where they buy the bonds. Okay, let me just pause for a while. So this, I'm just gonna show you the the slide. Okay, for for the balance sheet. Okay, but I'll pause for a while.
Okay, so um, any questions? Okay, uh, you can hear me, yeah? Yes, doctor. OK, so this is an example of the uh, American Federal Reserve or the Central Bank, American Federal Reserve um, uh, balance balance sheet okay, as of 2016. Okay. So basically, this is what uh, 4 trillion is in terms of securities. 4, 4.2. OK, and then uh, loans, I think a very small amount. 30, what's this, 37 million. Okay, 37 million to uh the loans that they give to commercial banks okay and uh, all other assets around 240 billion okay so it's a, overall they have assets of 4.4 trillion okay and the interesting or basically uh when we look at the assets okay this value must also be similar to the liabilities okay liabilities and net worth so this is the balance sheet okay so whatever asset that you have, it must be balanced with the liabilities. Right? So if you do accounting, you will know basically same, same for any uh, businesses as well. Okay, So the balance sheet must uh, uh, balance between the assets and liabilities. If it doesn't balance, there must be something missing okay? or there must be something wrong with your calculations. Okay, um, And we, I think we will see later, basically the, the different monetary policy approaches will change the balance sheet of the central bank. Okay, so either the, the balance sheet becomes bigger or the balance sheet becomes smaller. Okay, and this is also similar, if you remember, to the fiscal policy. Okay, even the government has the balance sheet as well. Okay, so they, on, sorry, not, not balance sheet, in terms of the, the size of the government, okay, when it comes to uh, how much spending and also how much revenue that they collect, this is also influence um, the size of the government. Okay, so the sorry, the government doesn't have a balance sheet, but it's more of a the size, right? So similarly, it, when you look at the central bank, the, the 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 size of the central bank will change depending on the amount of their balance sheet, the amount of money in their balance sheet. Okay, in terms of the value of the assets and liabilities. Okay, so uh, Basically, in, in different countries, we have different central banks. Okay, and, and this is just something that it's good to know. Okay, so in Australia, the central bank is called the Reserve Bank of Australia. In Canada, the central bank is called Bank of Canada. In Europe, the countries have basically foregone their monetary policy power. Okay, so uh, the countries in Europe okay, that has joined, that has fully joined uh, the re European Union, the EU, okay, they don't have the central banks for each country, but they have a European Central Bank. So this European Central Bank acts as the central bank for all the European Union countries. Okay, so all the countries that join the European Union, uh, their monetary policy will be determined by the European Central Bank. And I think this was, uh, uh, if you want to look at an interesting case study on the complicatedness of this, uh, you can see the, I think, after the global financial crisis, what happened also is the European financial crisis. So this happened in, in Europe, whereby there was some difficulties in terms of handling the monetary situation there, because actually in different countries, there were different, um, there were different circumstances and environment. Right, so that there were different circumstances and uh, environment, but basically in in the in the during the European financial crisis, okay, European financial crisis, uh, the 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 peak countries, okay, the peak countries were uh, having trouble. The peaks were having trouble. Okay, Portugal, Ireland, Greece. And Spain, and I think maybe Italy as well, were having trouble financially. And the issue was that because there is, there's only one central bank that controls all these different countries, uh, it's hard for you to to find a, a, a appropriate monetary policy for all of them, right? So this uh, basically the circumstances in these peaks countries 
uh, uh, required a different approach to to uh, to handle the monetary situation in each country. Okay, uh, so this is also uh, perhaps a disadvantage when you join a, 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 a monetary system like uh, the European Union. Okay, but of course there are advantages as well in terms of the size of the economy, in terms of doing business, but you have to forego your uh, authority as well. Okay, so this is the European Central Bank. Um, uh, and then we have the Bank of Japan, Bank, um, the Max Bank, okay, Banco de, de Mexico, and then the Central Bank of Russia, Sweden, uh, United Kingdom, Bank of England, and the United States, we have the Federal Reserve. Okay, so these are the names, the different names for different countries. And in Malaysia, of course, we have the Bank Negara Malaysia. Okay. So this is the authorities that will determine the monetary policy. Okay. And basically, in order for for the central bank to determine or to to change or to implement the monetary policy, there are four main ways to do that. Okay. And we will go through this. Okay. So uh, number one is the open market operation. Okay, open market operation. Number two is the reserve ratio. Number three is discount rate, and finally is the interest on on reserves. Right. So, uh, usually, primarily right now, uh, the primary tool that is being used is the open market operation. Okay. Um. So the open market operation is where basically, um, the central bank goes to the financial market, goes to the open market, and they will buy and sell government securities or commercial securities. Okay, And this, basically, this action of buying and selling by the central bank, okay, they can buy and sell okay, uh, security, either government securities, but also commercial, commercial securities as well. Okay, So the, 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 the bonds by commercial banks, for example. And they can, yeah, so they can they can buy from commercial banks and they can also sell uh, to commercial banks okay? and also the general public, right? So if you have, uh, 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 they can also sell to the general public. So if you have a certain amount of money, you can also buy the bonds from the central bank, right? So either they, so basically buying or selling. Okay, so the central bank goes to the market and this action eventually will influence money supply right so if you remember the shape of the money demand okay, this is the money demand it is interest this is the quantity of money okay so the the money supply okay, is this one so this is the money supply so the action of a uh, central bank can move this, can move the money supply to the left or move the money supply to the right. Okay. Uh, and it may also influence the money demand because people are also influenced by the announcement made by the central bank and this will also influence the money demand. But primarily this action of open market operations will influence the money supply in the economy. OK, so for example, okay, for example, when the Fed, OK, Fed here or the central bank, OK, sell securities. OK, so in this case, the, the central bank issues securities, issues bonds, OK, and the buyer of the bond are the commercial banks. OK, so the buyer of the bond the commercial bank, right? So you have a central bank. They sell securities to the commercial bank. Okay, so this is commercial bank. Okay. Well, actually, CB. CB is also the same same abbreviation. So uh, I think we just we just use the I say BNM. Okay, BNM. They sell securities, right? So the security is a bond and the bond is basically saying I O U or I O U. Okay, so this is 
basically the bond I owe you something and what do I owe you certain amount of money because you have bought the bond and you have given me money okay you have given the uh, bank negara has uh, sold the bond and the commercial bank has given money to the to bank negara and basically this money has to be repaid by the, the by BNM to the commercial bank with interest and so he, BNM now owes uh, CIMB for example okay so let's say this is CIMB when this happens BNM owes CIMB a certain amount of money and also the interest okay so what happens in this case okay, in this example okay, is that both the Federal Reserve and the okay, here BNM okay. and here is the CIMB okay. uh, both BNM and CIMB oh no sorry this is why is this showing eyes sorry okay so, so uh, here this is where this uh, BNM sells, okay. But in this case, this is where BNM buys bonds from the commercial bank, okay. So th this is the other way around. BNM, this is CIMB, okay. So CIMB sells bonds, okay. IOU, and BNM gives money, okay. Um, so in this case, okay. What happens in the in the reserve in in the in their balance sheet in of both BNM and CIMB? Okay, so now they have uh, securities. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. This is this is initially before the uh, operation happens. Okay. So now when when they buy when BNM buys the bonds. Okay. What happens is that the bonds is going to come up here so now they buy when they buy this is this is an asset okay so you add you add the asset here okay the bond here i owe you and the asset but at the same time you will also reduce the reserves of the commercial bank okay and this is where Why is this happening? Why is it reserve going now? Okay, sorry. I think it should be reserve going up. This is actually going the other way around. This is actually going the other way around. The reserve. Sorry, let me just change this. Just change this, yeah. So when the IOU uh, uh, increases in BNM, okay, so you add the IOU, the bond on the asset side, but at the same time, you add uh, reserves on the liability side. So here, this is the, the account of CIMB. Okay, on, on the right side here, this is CIMB's account, okay, and Basically, it's just the central bank transferring 
Yes. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so so when the central bank buys bonds, when the central bank buys bonds from CIMB, for example, okay, so now they have increased the amount of securities okay, in their balance sheet. Okay, you see the on the top here is the is the balance sheet of the central bank, okay, BNM. This is the central bank, central bank's balance sheet. Okay, and they basically increase the securities. Okay, because they have bought. They have bought the, the 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 bond okay on the left side here so the amount of securities has increased but when this happens in order to balance basically they put money in cimb's account right so basically the reserve that is being held um by the central bank for the cimb has increased okay and basically in terms of the asset and liabilities both have increase in the value okay so this is what happens in the central bank's balance sheet okay and the bottom part here is this is cimb's balance sheet okay so what happens in cimb's balance sheet is that they uh, in terms of the assets that they have basically they they have sold the iou okay? they have sold the bond to the central bank so they minus the securities but on the asset side as well, now they have more money. Okay, so they have more money in their reserves, right? So this is also basically A and B will cancel out. Okay, so the CIMB's um, balance sheet will also balance because of this. Okay, so the difference now is that BNM's uh, balance sheet will increase because both assets and liability side has increased. Okay, so in terms of balance sheet, in terms of the size of the central bank has increased because of the transaction that has happened okay so this is just something a simple way of illustrating what happens in the accounts of the central bank and the commercial banks okay um yeah and this is when yeah when the central bank buys bonds from the commercial banks okay uh, usually the the amount the total amount that actually is being created is more than the initial amount and we will we will look at this in more detail next week inshallah okay so for example if the the central the fed okay the fed buys uh 100 uh, 1000 um uh, uh dollars worth of bonds from a commercial bank so the initial um transaction is only 1000 essentially later on the total amount of money that is being produced in the economy will be more than that okay on, although the central bank only spends 1000 the total amount of money supply will increase to 5000 okay? and this is related to the fractional fractional reserve banking okay where whereby um, more money is being created out of debt okay debt will create more money okay so this is the system that we are operating in uh, and the details we will learn next week okay but it's for this week it's enough to know that uh, although the, the the money that is being given by the the fed or the central bank to the commercial bank is only 1000 it can increase up to 5000 okay so this is uh, how the system works okay um yeah so in open market operation in the case where central bank uh, buys the bonds either from commercial banks or from the public the total amount depending on the money multiplier will increase more than that right so in this case uh, uh, although they give 1000 but essentially by the end of the day 5000 
um, uh, the, the total amount of money that is being produced is 5,000. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is okay. So this is the other way around. So this is the other way around where when, okay, so just now is when the central bank buys bonds. Okay, and here is where the central bank sells bonds. Okay, when they sell bond, what happens is that, okay, so here the Federal Reserve, they sell a bond, the IOU, to, let's say, May Bank. Okay, and May Bank gives money. Okay, so in the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, they sell the bonds, right? So now the securities have been sold. Okay, so it goes down. Okay, and when this, uh, oh, so the arrow is not, um, okay. So the arrow just now is just showing where it goes from. Okay, so now the 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 money from May Bank, okay, goes to the uh, the reserve, okay, and basically in the in the balance sheet in the balance sheet this results to a negative in terms of the reserve, right? So basically the account of May uh, May Bank in the Federal Reserve, uh, let's say May Bank had had um, uh, 2,000, the account that, that Maybank had in, uh, the amount of money that they had in the account that uh, they had with the Federal, they have with the Federal Reserve is 2,000. And when they buy the bond, basically Federal Reserve just minus the amount. So the, the this amount is basically, when they minus it, is it is basically reducing the amount of the money in the India reserve in the account okay so in this case this will also balance okay uh, and in May Bank's account they have increased security okay so now they have the IOU and they also reduce their balance in the uh, Federal Reserve's account okay so this in both cases will um, balance out okay the asset and the liability So similarly, if they sell, if the central bank sells bonds to the public, the, the effect was also the same like if they sell to commercial banks. Right? So public can also buy the bonds from the central bank. Okay. Uh, if you have, a, I think there's a minimum amount. Okay. If you have, I think, 500,000 or 1 million, then you can buy a bond from the central bank. Okay. And this effect is basically will take away or take out money from uh, the the economy. Okay, so when central bank, okay, when central bank, um, okay, let's put here BNM. Okay, and here this is the economy. Okay, let's say this is the economy. Okay, this is the size of money in the economy. Okay, so when uh, so in the economy we have we have the May Bank, we have the CIMB, okay, and we have the general public. Okay. So what happens is that when BNM sells, okay, when BNM sells, so this one I sell bonds, a okay, bonds. Okay, what goes the other way is the money. So when this happens, basically the size of the money in the economy becomes smaller. Okay, so previously it was the first circle, now the size becomes smaller, right? Because the money is being taken out from the economy and being put with the central bank. So the money supply reduces when the central bank sells bonds to the public, right? Because you are taking away money from that is circulating in the economy, and now you are putting the money with the central bank where 
the transactions are not happening. Okay, people are not using the money to buy uh, and sell goods. Okay, so the size of the money supply reduces okay, because of this operation. Okay, and when um, if the other way around happens, if the other way around happens, whereby um, central bank sell, uh, central bank buys money. Uh, uh, sorry, central bank buys bonds. Okay. Okay, so let's say, let's say now, central bank buys bonds, yeah. So they buy bonds, so they get bonds, and they give money. Okay, they give money to to the issuers of the bonds. In this case, mean banks and MB, and this will basically increase the size of the money or increase the money supply. So now you have a bigger circle bigger amount of money in the economy because he's basically taking the money from the central bank and putting it into the circle. So you can imagine a balloon, right? So when the central bank buys bonds from the open market, they are basically injecting more air in the balloon. Right? So the size of the balloon becomes bigger, right? And when they are selling bonds, when they are selling bonds, they are basically taking away the air in the balloon. Okay, so they're taking away the money from the economy so that the size of the balloon becomes smaller. Right? So yeah, so in this case, when they sell sell bonds, okay, when they sell bonds, again you they sell bonds. So the money goes the other way. Okay, so the size becomes smaller. Okay. So this is the, the open market operation. So they either can buy bonds or sell bonds, and this will affect their balance sheet in terms of the asset and liabilities. And this is uh, basically influencing the money supply. Okay, the movement of money supply, and um, it will eventually influence the interest rate in the economy, okay? And the interest rate in the economy will influence the bond prices, and this will also influence the, uh, later on we will see um, in terms of the GDP, okay? Uh, which some of the factors in the GDP are affected by the interest rate. For example, consumption, uh, investment, government spending, sort of, and then export and import will also uh, be affected because of this, okay? Um, another aspect, is this? Oh, another, another thing that the government, uh, uh, the central bank can do in the open market is by offering repurchase agreements and reverse repurchase agreements. Okay, so this is also a sort of a bond, okay, but it is more termed as a collateralized loan. Right, so this is where uh, the central bank gives money and uh, or, or the central bank um, um, sort of take, take up a loan from the commercial bank. Okay, so the central bank can go to the to May Bank, for example, I want to have a repo with you and I will pay you a certain percentage. So now Maybank gives money to the central bank and central bank pays them a certain amount of uh, interest. Okay. So it is a sort of collateralized loan and this will also affect the, um, uh, the, the money supply in the economy. Right? So it's just a different financial instrument. Uh, but of course, the underlying uh, mechanisms are different, but it is similar to, uh, in terms of the effect, similar to the bonds. Okay, so repo and reverse, reverse repos. Okay, so this is basically the open market operation. Okay, so the second, the second uh, tool. Uh, before that, is there any questions re re regarding the, regarding the, the the first tool for monetary policy? Okay, so that is the first tool, yeah. 
open market operation. So the tech second tool that the central bank can use is called the res reserve ratio. Okay, reserve ratio. So the reserve ratio basically uh, is part of the um, fractional reserve banking. Okay, fractional reserve banking. Okay, so fractional reserve banking is where um, basically, the the bank. Okay, if you open a bank, and people are putting money in your account. Okay, so the law of of this system is that you can use the money that people have put in in uh, with you, and give it out as a loan. Right. So uh, when depositors put money, for example, if I put money in Maybank, actually Maybank will use my money that I put and give it as a loan. Right. So, uh, but the 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 the, the legal um, aspect is that you cannot use all of it. Okay, Maybank cannot use all of my money to give out as a loan. There must be a certain amount that they keep as a reserve. Right? For example, if I if I put uh, open an account with Maybank, okay, I put one hundred. Okay, and the reserve ratio. For example, my negara says the reserve ratio is 10%. Right, so Maybank can only use 90% of 100, so they can use 90, 90 ringgit, okay, 90 dollars, and give it out as a loan. Okay, and the remaining 10 must be reserved. Okay, because the reserve Requirement is ten percent. Okay, reserve requirement is ten percent. So you can basically is saying that banks you can use the depositors' money, but ten percent has to be reserved. Okay, so this of course will influence the money supply in the economy. Okay, and will influence how much. Uh, from the initial money that is being uh, injected in the economy will will multiply. So this is a money multiplier. Okay, so the reserve ratio, depending on the amount, will basically change the supply in the economy. Right? So for example, in this case, initially the reserve requirement is 10%. Right? But now, let's say central bank changes the requirement Instead of 10%, now we reduce it to uh, 5%. Okay, so basically, when the reserve requirement is 5%, so instead of 90, 90 ringgit, now Maybank can give 95 ringgit, and they sh they only reserve 5 ringgit in the bank, my money, because I put this money in the in in the account, but they use it, and they can give it out as a loan. Right. So in this case, this will of course increase the amount of money supply in the economy, and we will go into detail later on. But uh, basically, the reserve requirement or the reserve ratio will influence how much money is in the economy. Okay. Um, yeah. And when we look at uh, um, uh, that requirement it is also a requirement for this, the commercial banks in their account with the uh, in the uh, sorry the amount of uh, money that is reserved also is being put in the uh, uh, central bank's account right? so they put the money in the central bank's account because you can't touch it so this has to be a reserve okay and this, uh, from this, you can calculate what is the reserve ratio okay, of the country. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is an example uh, for the different amounts of deposits. Okay. So in so this is the US example, right? So they may have different reserve requirements for different amounts right so 
uh, accounts, okay, accounts for that are less than 15 million. Okay, the requirement, the current requirement, um, I think this was 2016. You you don't have to reserve anything. So if I put hundred hundred dollars in a bank, the bank can give out fully one hundred dollars to another person in the form of a loan. Okay, but if if my in my account I have 15 to 110 million, so the the only uh, requirement is that they have to reserve 3%. The remaining 97% they can give up as a loan, right? So this is just showing at different levels, there are different reserve requirement, okay? And this is basically would influence the amount of money in the economy, okay? So yeah, so here basically the is the effect of the reserve ratio, okay? So the, the, the higher the reserve ratio, okay, the higher the reserve ratio, the lower the amount of money is being created in the economy. Right? So the reserve ratio is basically how much of uh, in terms of the percentage must the uh, commercial banks not touch. You cannot touch it. You cannot give it out as a loan. This is the amount that you have to reserve. Okay. So basically the higher the amount that they have to reserve, the lower the money creation in the economy. Right? So as you can see here, as as the reserve ratio increases, the potential money creating potential goes down. Okay, up to a point of negative here. Okay, so this is the basically the second um, the second tool that the central bank can use. Okay, uh, any questions on that? Okay, can you hear me? Just to confirm. Uh, yes, doctor. Okay. So that's the second tool, okay? And then the third tool that they can use is discount rate. Okay, so the discount rate is basically the minimum interest rate, minimum interest rate set by the central bank or the uh, Federal Reserve when they lend money to other banks. Okay, so basically BNM, Bank Negara Malaysia, they can lend money to Mi Bank, they can lend money to CIMB, they can lend money to all the commercial banks in Malaysia. Okay, and they can basically set any amount of interest that they charge to these banks. Okay, and uh, uh, the this happens why? Because basically these banks have to adhere to um, regulatory requirements. Right, so, for example, May, uh, May Bank, by the end of the day, they have to have a certain amount of uh, cash in hand, okay, a certain amount of cash that they have in their accounts. And if the cash is not enough, for example, they have to borrow from other banks because of the legal requirements, right? I think now they have, uh, uh, they are following Basel III, okay, Basel III, and they have like a certain amount, uh, uh, for example, uh, banks in Malaysia, they close by 5, 5 uh, p.m., right? So by 4, 4.30, they check, okay, how much money do we have? Okay, and what is the what is the requirement? Right? So this is just simplifying. Huh? So let's say uh, the requirement is that we have to have uh, 100 million in, a, in our bank in terms of the cash, okay? But now because we've given up as a loan and we don't have enough um, cash in hand, right? so we have to borrow from... Uh, 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 other banks, for example, or we can also borrow from the central bank. Okay, so they have to borrow. So either the uh, May Bank can go to CIMB or HSBC. They can go. They can do that. Okay, so they borrow from one another to to fulfill the requirement. Okay, and if, for example, the other banks are saying, okay, we cannot lend it to you. Okay, we don't have enough cash in hand um, uh, ourselves. So uh, we we can't do that. Okay, so what the the May Bank can do is that they can go to the central bank or the Federal Reserve, okay, or Bank Negara as the lender of last resort because other banks are not giving them uh, the loan. Okay, we need we need now we only have fifty million. We need uh, fifty million more to to fulfill the requirement. So they can go to central bank and they can borrow 
Okay, but usually as a last resort, when other banks are not uh, uh, giving the loan, or the 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 uh, other banks are saying, okay, you can borrow from us, but we will charge you a very high interest. Okay, so Maybank can, can go to PNM and say oh, we want to borrow from you. Okay, so this is usually as a last resort. Okay, and this is usually just overnight or just a few days. They have to pay back. Okay, Maybank will pay back. Okay. Um, and this is basically uh, the amount that the Federal Reserve charge or the central bank charge in terms of the interest is called the discount rate. Okay, how much do we do you have to pay? You can borrow from us 50 million, but we will you have to pay us an interest of 3%, for example, or 2%. Okay, so so this discount rate is basically used as a benchmark for commercial banks. So they can basically they go to the they can ask the central bank, uh, uh, Bank Negara Malaysia, for example, they can, can contact Bank Negara. What is the discount rate now? If we borrow from you, how much are you going to charge us? So the central bank can say, OK, three, three percent. So this is three percent is usually used as a benchmark. Okay, Why? Because, for example, if 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 uh, if let's say BNM. Say the. The discount rate is three percent. Okay, discount rate is three percent. Okay, so if, for example, uh, me bank, me bank borrow um, hundred million. Okay, hundred million, and they pay three percent. Right, they pay pay interest of three percent. So based on this okay they can loan out the 100 million okay, as a loan and they can charge five percent so in this case they get a profit of two percent okay so this is if they borrow if they borrow okay uh, but of course they don't have to do this basically they just use this amount that central bank has mentioned okay, they say okay three percent okay so now every all the other banks know this is the discount rate that the central bank is uh, offering so we use this as a as a benchmark so if it's three percent we must we must of course charge more than three percent okay we charge more than three percent maybe 3.5 or four percent we cannot charge less than three percent because this is the amount that the central bank is giving to us. OK, so this is basically also would influence the interest rate in the economy okay? and also influence the um, the amount of money supply in the economy. OK, but usually this is only happens as a last resort. OK. And then finally, the last tool. Is a uh, very rarely used okay? the last the last time um, um, before I think or after the, the, the global financial crisis is interest on reserves. OK, basically. Um, the, the. The this interest on reserve is basically a way of encouraging or discouraging uh, the commercial banks to. Take out the money. Or to keep the money in the reserve in order to get some interest. OK, so if. Uh, for example, uh, the, the amount of reserve in the in the central bank. Uh, basically, uh, Maybank can increase the amount of uh, money in the, in the in the accounts and get a certain interest. OK, or I think like what happened in some, some certain countries is that the central bank says to the commercial banks, don't keep anything in reserve. I want you to loan out all the money that you have. Okay, so in order to jumpstart the economy, if you keep money in reserve, you have to pay us a certain interest, right? So negative interest. So this happened uh, in I think uh, some countries. Um, or the central bank want to discourage the commercial banks from using the money. They can say if you keep the money in the reserve, we will give you a certain amount of interest. Right? So this is also would influence. Uh, the money supply in the economy. OK, so. Overall. In terms of. 
uh, the tools of monetary policy. Okay, uh, as of today, and I think post global financial crisis, the open market operation is the one that is mostly used by the central banks. Okay. Uh, in the US, the reserve ratio, I think, is similar in, the, in Malaysia as well. The last is it's very rarely that they change the reserve ratio. And the discount rate is not normally something that they change uh, because of the monetary policy, okay, because the discount rate is also as a lender of last resort. And similarly, interest on reserve is not as influential. Okay, so usually what they do is they will use the open market operation. This is where they buy and sell bonds. Okay. Um, Yeah, so they okay. So they, they also have the overnight policy rate. Overnight policy rate is basically um, the amount that they announce. Okay, the amount that they announce in so in in the US it is called the Federal Funds Reserve, Federal Funds Rate. Uh, in Malaysia, it's called the OPR. Okay, so the recent announcement. Let's see. This is the announcement by the Central Bank, okay, Bank of Malaysia. They can change this OPR. Okay, so recently, after a very long period, they changed the OPR. Okay, and they will usually announce this. So this OPR is also used as a benchmark uh, by commercial banks in how they offer loans. And you you will you use I think some of you if you have loans in Malaysia. When the, the central bank announced an increase in the OPR, uh, the amount that you have to pay in terms of the interest also increase based on this because this is used as a benchmark. Okay. Um, and the last time it was changed was during this, the, the, the start of the pandemic. Okay. okay. So this was a reduction in the OPR, but now they are increasing the OPR because of uh, inflation. Okay, they want to reduce the money supply by increasing the interest rate in the economy. So the, the interest rate, when we increase the interest rate, basically more people will uh, save money in the bank and less people will take up loans because of the increasing interest rate. Right? So this is, this is uh, part of the, you can argue part uh, uh, of the monetary policy as well. Okay, that, that, that they influence the uh, interest rate announce it and this will influence the money supply. Okay. <coughs> okay so that is the the tools of the monetary policy. Okay, so so um now we look at the effects. Okay, the effects of the monetary policy and when they use it. Okay, when they use it. So <coughs> For an expansionary monetary policy. Before that, any questions on the tools? Okay, can you hear me? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay. Okay. So, so now, uh, are the different monetary policies um, that the central um, the different yeah, this, the different monetary policies that the central banks can undertake. Okay, so number one is called an expansionary monetary policy. So this is where usually they want to expand the economy and they want to increase the amount of money supply. So they want to expand, right? The balloon, they want to expand the balloon, make it bigger. Okay, so when do they want to make it bigger? Is when the economy has shrunk. Okay, when the economy has shrunk and the economy shrinks usually the during a recession okay so in our recent uh, times this happened during covid when covid started right so the economy shrunk all over the world okay and in response in response the central banks all over the world they undertook the expansionary monetary policy Right. So when recession happens, basically. The. 
okay the gdp went down okay so now we want to increase the gdp again okay so remember the the components of gdp gdp equals to c i g and net exports okay and x okay <clears throat> so now uh, during this time during this period okay central banks around the world undertook expansionary monetary policy okay how do they do it one of the ways is they lower the target for federal funds rate okay so in malaysia it is called the opr okay because because now the gdp is shrinking okay so basically when covid happened when covid happened consumption went down okay people were not spending investment went down businesses cannot even operate okay you had you had lockdowns right um, and net exports also went down okay people were not buying and uh, the movement of goods and services were not happening okay so basically this caused the gdp to go down okay so now expansionary monetary policy they want it they want it to go the other way around okay so they, instead of going down we want it to go up okay so how do we do that we firstly we lower the federal funds rate okay one of the ways lower the federal funds rate so as i showed you just now in malaysia okay so covid happened at the end of the 2019 that's why covid 19 so during that time the opr was three percent okay after covid happened and the, the economy shrunk Okay, so the the central bank was already anticipating the economy to shrink. So now we have to undertake expansionary monetary policy. Okay, so they reduce the OPR by this is called the uh, 0.25 percent. So in economics term, sometimes they will say it is 25 basis points. Okay, so 25 basis points is basically 0.25 percent. Okay, so they reduce the OPR. So previously it was 3 percent. Now it is 2.7. Okay, and then they did it again in March by uh, another 25 basis points, and in May, uh, five, 50 basis points, and in July, 25 basis points. Okay, so from 3%, now it is 1.75%. Okay, so when this happens, basically, because it is used as a benchmark. Right, it is used as a benchmark. Now the interest rate has gone down. Okay, so when interest, so when interest rate go down, okay, OP when OPR go down, eh, interest rate go down. What happens is that the um, the idea is that when interest rate go down, people will be more likely to take up loans because why? Because you you pay a low interest so loans will increase okay so when loans increase people have more money to spend right so the idea is that when loan increase consumption will also increase and when loan increase investment also increase because businesses take up loans to to survive or to to spend in for investment okay so so loans increase okay Another aspect is when interest decrease, people are less likely to save money in the bank. Why? Because they have less interest. Okay, so savings go down. Okay, and when savings go down, consumption go up. Okay, or disposable income go up. Uh, no, not disposable. Consumption go up. Okay, so C also go up. Okay, and part of that also would affect the exports. Okay. And when people are buying more, um, especially if if it's but uh, people from overseas are buying more, um, um, it would affect your exports, okay? And this will affect the GDP overall as well, okay? So this is basically OPR, okay, where interest is being set, okay? So this is the target. We want to reduce the interest from, um, okay? So here we can visualize the money supply and money demand so this is demand this is interest it's quantity of money supply right and then this is 
uh, supply. Okay, and this is the equilibrium interest rate. Okay, so so what this does is when they lower the target is that the the central bank basically says now the interest rate is three percent. Okay, we want to lower it to two point seven five. 2.75%. So they announced 2.75 and this will basically increase the money supply. Okay. Sorry, supply two. Okay, it moves to the right. So this they announced the interest rate first and this will influence the money supply through the increase of loans, right? Because people are taking up loans, right? The debt that they take increase the money supply in the economy. And secondly, they are taking out money in their savings. So the money supply increases, okay? Another aspect, okay, in terms of expansionary monetary policy is the open market operation here. Okay, open market operation, where the central bank buys securities. Okay, again, when, when they buy, okay, KBNM buys from Maybank. Okay. So they buy bonds. Okay, so they get bonds. And they give money to Maybank. Okay, now they buy because they're buying. So what does now Maybank has a, has more money? Okay, we have more money. What what should we do? Right? So they will give it out as loans. So they have more money from here. So what do they do with it? They try to give it out as loans because now um, we, what's the use of us keeping this money, right? So if let's say they are paying, they are paying the bond prices at uh, uh, interest of 3%. So the loans that they give is maybe 3.5%. It's just an example. Okay, so they, they give at least, so here basically would also increase the money supply. So it is movement of the money supply also, as you can see, shifts to the right as well. Okay, and overall it expands the money supply. So the quantity of money supply moves from Q1 to Q2. Okay, um, and basically the movement of the interest rate overall will go down. Okay, so this will reduce the interest rate. Okay, and, and as, you, as you saw as well, the OPR goes down further and further during this period. Okay, so this is the expansionary monetary policy, and this will affect the primarily the the I would argue will affect the consumption and investment. Okay, and indirectly maybe net exports, but I think the main um, factors or components that it will influence is the C and I. Okay, so this happened most recently when COVID started. Okay, when COVID started, this happened. Okay, so uh, uh, the response to COVID is an expansionary monetary policy, and this is, I think, you have to uh, be aware of this, especially for your assignment. Okay, okay, but as we saw as well, recently or currently in the past month, most of governments or uh, most of the central banks around the world are undertaking a restrictive monetary policy. Okay, and this happens when usually when the economy is expanding too much. Okay, this is expanding too much too fast. Okay, it's good to expand, but you cannot you cannot expand too fast. Why? Because if it's too fast, the balloon will pop. Okay, if the balloon pops, then it will cause chaos. So we want it to expand still, but slow down a bit, not too fast. Okay, so during this period, when the economy is expanding too much, usually it is related to what happens is that there will be inflation. And in Malaysia, I think everyone is experiencing this right now. The prices of goods and services are going up. Okay, so what the central bank does in response is they restrict, they under, undertake a restrictive monetary policy. Okay. And they can do, do it by increasing the federal funds rate or the OPR. Okay. And I think, sorry.
So in Malaysia, they just did it last month, 11th of May, a few weeks ago. Okay, so they increased the OPR. Okay, in US. Yeah, so now they, uh, yesterday they still uh, are calling for increase by 50 basis points. Okay, now this one, 75 basis points. Yeah, one month ago, okay, one month ago, the Federal Reserve raised rates by half a percent or 50, percent, uh, 50 basis points, the biggest hike in two decades to fight inflation. So this is this is also a response. Uh, you can argue post COVID okay, another another response, a monetary policy response post COVID, where the the economy has opened up, but inflation is happening. Okay, so they are basically increasing the interest rate. Okay, so they increase the by 50, and this is the highest in two decades in 20 years. Okay. Similarly, in other countries, you can you can Google other countries. Most of the central banks are increasing their federal funds rate or the OPR. Okay, and if you visualize this, basically, <coughs> in the money and supply, money. Okay, this is interest, this is quantity, this is the supply of money, this is the demand of money. And this is the initial interest rate. Okay, let's say three three percent. Sorry, make it lower. Let's make it lower so it's easier to see. Supply and demand is here. For example, okay, this is the uh, let's say. 3%. Okay. So now they increase it. They announce we want to target 3.5% OPR. Okay. So now they want a level here. And this will movement is that it will move, supply will move to the left. Okay. In order to reach this equilibrium. Okay. So the quantity of money will reduce. Okay. And basically, when interest in increase, okay, interest increase, the, the loans that people will take up decrease and savings increase. So when people save, the supply of money in the economy will reduce, and this will result to lower consumption, okay, lower investment, and essentially lower GDP growth, not lower GDP, lower GDP growth. Okay, so this will um, uh, decrease basically the money supply. Okay, and this is what's happening around the world right now. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is just showing the influence of the federal funds rate or the OPR to the other interest rate in the economy. Okay. So usually the shape of the OPR or the federal funds rate will influences will influence other interest rates in the economy. So the movement is the same. Okay, so based on the benchmark, usually there's a markup. So this is the markup that the 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 financial institutions will take. So this is their profit. Okay, based on this. Okay, so uh, in the US, they use um, uh, they have different um, um, targets, right? So different countries have different monetary policy objectives. Okay. So in the US, they they target inflation rate. So I think in Malaysia as well, they have a certain target. Um, they want the inflation. For example, now the inflation is seven percent. We want the inflation 
to be around 5% only. We cannot allow for more than 7%. So they have a target. So in the US, how they, they achieve this target or how they estimate this, this target is by using the Taylor rule. Okay. So the Taylor rule in the US, uh, the Taylor rule says, basically, if inflation you want to target is around 2%, the federal funds rate must be twice that. Okay, so this is this is their, their rule based on the data, based on the data and the historical data that they had. They can use this Taylor rule in order to determine how much is the federal funds rate. Okay, but I think more recently, this rule has no longer applied. It's no longer apl applicable because of the changing nature of the system and the economy in the in uh, in US. Okay, uh, but basically, different countries will have different targets, and they can, based on their modeling, they can sort of estimate what are the interests that they can uh, set and what is the amount of money, uh, what what is the amount of bonds that we buy or set. Okay, depending on our models. Okay, uh, so if you are, for example, I think uh, an economist, right? So the role of economists usually is to do this modeling, and based on the data that we have, we can estimate, you know, and they uh, they will usually present this to a committee in the central bank, present this data, and then based on our data, we we we, we should increase the OPR to a certain percentage, right? So this is. Uh, um, the, the work of the economists usually in, in, in the banks. Okay. Yeah, so. So yeah, so basically monetary policy. Oh, so this is the visualization. So the monetary policy will influence the real GDP and the price levels. Okay, so they. It is a link. There is a, a cause effect chain where. The market for money or the supply and demand for money will influence investment and interest rate okay and this will also affect the aggregate demand which will affect the gdp and the prices okay so depending on the expansionary or restrictive monetary policy so basically the aim overall aim or the over, overall outcome of an expansionary monetary policy usually will result to a reduction in interest rate. Okay. And then um, cent uh, central bank or Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve. Buy securities. Okay, in the open market operation. And then. Result to increase in consumption, increase in investment. And then increase in GDP. Okay. And restrictive increase in interest rate. Federal Reserve sells bonds. Okay. And this will reduce consumption. Reduce um, investment and also reduce the GDP. So here increase in GDP. So this is basically the summary okay, on how or, or the effects or of the, the, the monetary policy that they are undertaking. Okay. Yeah, so this is just showing the relationship of money, the market for money, and also the investment demand. Yeah, I think we covered investment and its relationship to interest, right? Previously, whereby the higher the interest, the lower the investment, investment demand. Okay, so the lower the interest, okay, in this case, if it's 10%, interest is 10%, the, the investment is 15. Okay, the investment is 15. Okay, but let's say if the interest change because of the increase in money supply, now the interest goes down. So supply, money supply increase, interest goes down. And because of interest going down, the investment increase okay, because businesses are taking up more loans. Right? So the money supply also increase. And this will if essentially increase the aggregate demand and of, of course increase the real GDP. Okay, the amount of uh, so the expansion will happen. 
this this is what happens in a expansionary monetary policy okay no no okay so this is an expansionary okay basically what happened during uh, the start of covid okay during the lockdowns the problem was unemployment and recession many people didn't have a job so what can the central bank do okay so this is where they undertook expansionary monetary policy in response they buy bonds in open market operation they lower the reserve ratio lower the discount rate lower interest on reserves okay and this basically increase the money in the the commercial banks account the excess there were in, uh, increase in excess reserve and basically federal fund rate fall money supply increases interest rate fall investment spending increases consumption also increases aggregate demand increases real gdp increases okay so in your analysis you have to see what was what tool actually the central bank did okay so you still have time there's a lot of reports out there for the country that you choose so you have to see how much exactly did they uh, change in terms of the federal funds rate how much opr did they change for example and how much did they bonds that they bought okay so this was the response during the start of covid okay now what is happening okay what is happening now over the past few months okay the problem is inflation now all around the world price of goods and services is increasing so what the central bank can do they can sell bonds increase reserve ratio increase this discount rate uh, increase interest on reserve and also increase opr okay um yeah so this will decrease excess reserve yeah increase opr here money supply decreases interest rate increases investment spending decreases aggregate demand decreases inflation decrease so this is the theory this is the theory okay but of course this might not happen this might not happen okay uh, so this is the effort that is being done um but this is this is uh, uh this um response okay this response that is happening is assuming okay assuming because the cause of inflation why is called why does inflation happen too much money chasing too few goods okay so usually the response of the central bank is because they are assuming inflation is happening because there is too much money is only the first part so they are assuming there's too much money in the economy now we want to reduce the amount of money okay so we want to allow for the money supply to fall okay um and this is perhaps it is there is some uh, they have the data there is some um sense to that okay because there's too much money okay but right now okay my understanding my argument is that the cause of inflation right now is not because there's too much money is actually because of too few goods because this global supply chain okay, in terms of the supply of goods and services has reduced and you see um this is because of countries around the world are restricting the export of the goods that they produce okay and if you look for example there's many factors and you can attribute this to the factor of the war in ukraine okay the war in U ukraine where um and also um um the the embargo that is uh that is um, uh, imposed on russia Okay, so because countries they they say we want to boycott Russia, we don't buy things from Russia. Okay, um, and also the lockdowns in China. 
So the China, because of the lockdown in China, they are not producing. It, uh, the, the factories are closing and they are not producing goods. Right? And because of that, the, the amount of goods that are in circulation is actually has actually re reduced. Okay, and therefore it, it, it has caused the, the problem of inflation that is happening right now. Okay, so in this case, there is some sense in reducing the money supply, but actually the, the main problem is the supply of goods and services in the global economy right now. So this must be addressed. Okay, even in Malaysia, we have currently, I think the current crisis is there is a shortage of chicken. Okay. So the, the cause of inflation is not because people have too much money, but actually because the supply of chicken is restricted. And because the, the main reason is because of the increase in cost that the suppliers are, uh, or the producers of chicken have to bear. Because they because they are buying uh, chicken feed, right? Chicken feed, the food of the chicken, usually they import from outside. And now the price of the chicken feed has increased. And because of that, they are buying less of the chicken feed. And because they're buying less, they can only produce less amount of chicken. Okay, so then the amount of chicken in the economy is uh, reduced um, and have put pressure on the prices of chicken. Right, so I think in the next few weeks, uh, the, the minimum, uh, the, the maximum price of chicken uh, will no longer be there because it is a control item. But the government, I think, recently announced that they cannot put a, 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 a minimum, a maximum amount. Okay, so they cannot put a ceiling. Okay, so in the next few weeks, we will see chicken prices go up, and this will, of course, affect the prices of the food that we buy in the cafes, in the restaurants, because of the increase in price, and this will, of course, affect us essentially okay so the effort by the central bank by increasing the opr and uh, maybe they will sell some bonds uh, is part of that policy okay to address this issue okay um so some evaluation especially compared to fiscal policy okay basically in terms of monetary policy it is more fast in terms of the speed and flexibility okay because the government uh, fiscal policy also has a lot of bureaucracy and and in in most cases in most countries there is a certain amount of independence so the central bank is independent the central bank independent and has its own autonomy so it dis decides on its own what monetary policy should we do okay and basically when this happens it is isolated from political pressure in most countries okay in most countries the government cannot interfere in the monetary policy that central bank has decided okay um, but there are cases where uh, the central bank is also um, uh, exposed to political pressure as well okay i think most recently in turkey where where the where the president i think a few years a few months ago or a few years ago the president basically uh, fired the govern governor of the central bank and then appointed person that is close to him that will follow his um, uh, his desires. Okay, uh, so in that case, there is no more independence. Okay, um, and another advantage is that monetary policy is more subtle than fiscal policy. Okay, yeah, and then. Uh, yeah, so you can see, I think, in, the, in uh, the, the response during global financial crisis was similar to the response during COVID. Okay, so they they undertook uh, expansionary, okay, expansionary monetary policy. So, um, yeah, so this is just basically what happened. Um, but there are some issues that may have may 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 happen uh, related to monetary policy as well. Okay, whereby uh, there will be lags. Okay, by the time you identify the problem and you have a response, is already the environment has already changed. Okay, 
and then they might be <coughs> might be cyclical asymmetry where the issues that are happening <coughs> is not so much <coughs> because of the money supply but because of the uh, business cycle okay, so when when recession happens of course unemployment will increase right? so the money supply does not influence much okay so it is it's more of a cyclical asymmetry and then finally there there, there are cases in some european and developed countries where there is a liquidity trap whereby if they if they lower the interest it actually doesn't affect the money supply because people people are still saving uh, uh, high and they are not consuming okay so these are i think in 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 european countries during the global financial crisis and also in in japan right now this is still ongoing because in japan they are they are lowering the interest rate but people are still saving they are not consuming much and this is partly because of the aging society and also they are not uh, a consuming they are not consuming much they are like a minimalist society that doesn't change their spending behavior despite the interest rate so even though the interest rate is low they still don't change their behavior okay, because of their uh, lifestyle okay and also because of the aging society they are already old they, they don't see any need to change their lifestyle based on the interest okay so this basically even though the interest has changed up or down it doesn't influence people's consumption it doesn't influence their investment okay and when this happens the monetary policy will be ineffective okay and i think in some uh, european countries during the uh, global financial crisis the interest rate was zero okay the interest rate zero and there were i think a few that cases where the interest rate were negative for example if it's negative one percent if you save money in the bank the bank don't give you interest but you have to pay the bank some money so if it's negative right so this i think ha happened in a few countries uh, and if it's zero basically no uh, we won't give you any interest but still people didn't take out their money because they didn't see the need for it okay even if we take out the money we don't spend it okay so this will make monetary policy ineffective okay uh yeah so the big picture Okay, overall, is that they, this uh, monetary policy and the fiscal policy okay, basically wants to influence this part. Okay, um, the C, I, X, and uh, N, X, and government spending, but it may also influence. Uh, this part okay whereby if interest rate interest rate go down okay investment may go up and when investment go up maybe in some cases will influence the input at uh, the price of resources and this will if effectively affect the aggregate supply but primarily it is this one it is to influence the aggregate demand okay so this is the main aim uh, and if you remember aggregate supply aggregate demand okay, aggregate supply aggregate demand gdp this is prices okay so you want aggregate demand to increase so gdp increases okay gdp1 gdp2 okay, so ad1 ad2 right so inevitably when ad moves and es doesn't move it will, will cause the inflation price increase okay so from p1 to p2 okay but overall basically monetary policy and fiscal policy these are the things that they want to influence okay yeah so this also oh yeah so this is uh during the in response to global financial crisis okay gfc european central bank set a negative interest rate so if if the if if the bank uh, if you put money in, keep the money in the bank you have to pay interest to us okay so the idea is that for the banks to lend more but when the banks even the when the 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 interest rate was low no one went to the bank to borrow okay because of the uh, 
they didn't see the need to borrow. Right, so then uh, what it happened is that uh, because of this, they changed the policy. Instead of you coming to borrow from the bank, we just give you money. So they just uh, undertook cash transfers. Okay, so that's more effective. Okay, so one of the I think one of the main references if you have already started and finished your assignment, this is one of the references that you can. I think you have already realized. Okay, the IMF has, I think, for all the countries around the world. Okay, so if you have copied from here, I, I most likely will be aware of it. So you can take the data from here. Okay, you can take the data from here, but you have to change the wording. Okay, you have to you you have to write the assignment in your own words. Okay, so make sure don't plagiarize. Okay. Because it's just e it's really easy to see if you plagiarize, right? So the policy responses. Uh, these are this is one of the main references. Okay, this is the one of the main references that you can you can use to see the um, yeah, the policy responses okay, from IMF. So they have for all the countries around the world. Okay. Um, if for Malaysia, doing for Malaysia, you can also refer to this. The IMF also has, and this is also one of the references that you can do. Okay, so this is this is the report that I I did. For a German uh, German uh, institute, yeah, I, I I still don't know how to pronounce this. Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, Stiftung. Okay, so they asked me to 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 do a report on what is the impact of COVID nineteen and what is the uh, policy responses. Not only not only the fiscal and monetary policy, but also I looked at other types of policies that they can undertake. Okay, so this is, yeah, you can you can download the publication here. So I did this during the start of COVID. Okay, during the start of COVID, and I was looking at what what, what was the effect, and what can be done. Okay, so these are, and it was published in December, December 2020. So I did it, I think around middle of December, I started to see what is the data. What is the effect and what is the response by the government? And then by by December, it was already published. OK, so this is also an, if you want to refer for Malaysia, this is also one of the references that you can you can use. OK, but of course, after after December 2020, uh, even August until December and then after that in 2021, there's a lot of other policies that the government also undertook. OK. Um, let me just share this one. OK, um, that's it. Yeah, any questions before we end? Uh, Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. OK, uh, repo rate and OPR is the same or they are different? Uh, repo rate is more similar to a bond. Yeah. A bond is 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 if I if I if I sell you a bond, I give you a piece of paper, right? I, this is a bond. I owe you some amount of money, and you give me money, right? So repo rate is similar, but instead of a bond, I give you a, rep, uh, a loan, or you give me a loan, and I will, I will, um, um, um. You give me money, okay, I will give you a piece of paper that I have a repo, okay, and okay. The repo is basically saying that if I don't pay you back, you can take my bond. You can take a, a bond that I have as a collateral. Okay, so the repo is basically uh, related to the bond. You understand? Uh, so yes, let's so. say. Let's say I have a bond value at one million. OK, 
okay, I have a bond value at 1 million. Basically, this bond I bought from somewhere, someone else. And then this bond give me a return of 5%. Okay, so I have this bond. But then I, I go to you and I say, let's do a repo. Okay, let's do a repo. I want to borrow 1 million from you. Okay, I want to borrow 1 million from you. Um, and I will pay you a certain amount of interest. Okay, so you give me 1 million. And I give you a piece of paper, the repo. Okay, the repo says that I owe you 1 million. I will pay your interest. But if I don't pay, if I don't uh, um, repay you, Okay, for whatever reason, I, I didn't repay you back this interest or the loan. You can repossess or you can take my bond. Okay, so this bond is a collateral. If I don't pay, the bond you can take. So that's that's the repo. Okay, understand? Yes, yes, Doc. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, everyone understand? Huh? So if you haven't submitted your first assignment, please do it uh, immediately. And then your the term paper, you still have time until the 7th, okay, this, the 7th of uh, uh, June okay, to, to submit. And if you already submitted and you want to improve, it's up to you. You can, you can look back and then uh, try to incorporate what we have learned today. Okay, so if, please also be very, very, careful with plagiarism don't don't simply copy paste because there's a lot of reports that you can uh, look at and read and there's a, a lot of you know maybe you are uh, it's easy for you to uh, to just copy and paste and and change a few words here and there uh, but usually the 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 plagiarism software turn it in will detect that so it's better for you to see the data again and then write in your own words. Okay. Uh, so this is also an exercise for you later on when you do your uh, dissertation. Okay. So in academia, if you uh, uh, get the information from someone else, you also have to have the citation. Okay. So if you get this information from uh, this report, for example, you have to put the citation for it. Okay. So uh, while I still remember. Let me just share the uh, my report. How is it? I share the okay. Um, and also I will give the quiz. Uh, maybe to, inshallah by tomorrow, and you can maybe in two weeks time you can answer at your own time. Okay. Is that clear? Yes, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes, doctor. Okay, so if there's no more questions, uh, we can end the class with uh, Tasbih Kafara and Surat Al Asban. Allahu Akbar. Bi Amdika Ashhadu Alla Ilaha Illa Anta. Astaghfiruka wa Tabliq wa Alasri Inna Insana Bi Khusi Illa Ladin Amanu Amin Salihat wa Tawasa Bil Haq wa Tawasa Bil Sab. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Wa Rahmatullah.